Hello everyone and welcome again to another video in which we try to help students to write better essays. My name is Bakhsh Baisham, a lecturer at Jalfa University. Today's course is more practical in nature. We try to discuss how one can construct a good introduction. You see, academically speaking, a good introduction serves as an outline for the whole essay or an article, without which a reader can really get confused about what you are writing about and your logic. However, in an exam, things are a bit different. See, in an exam is we want really to impress just for to get a good grade. In a PhD exam, which is not about the grade per se, but it's a more of a selection exam, so we need to leave the examiner with an overwhelming impression. Thus, we need to mine details. This is the aim of the course. Now, let's start with what do you mean by a good introduction? See, a good introduction needs to impress an examiner at three levels. We have language, information, and logic. Now, starting with language, you see, if you commit a spelling mistake at the first sentence, I would say you are doomed, because that leaves a bad taste that would reverberate through the whole essay, and there is no way you can reverse that. Think of it as like that first impression when you meet someone, but in this case, you have no chance to redeem it. Therefore, I would recommend you flex your muscles at the introduction, dem demonstrate your mastery of language. However, also be careful of overdoing it. Sometimes in the attempt to find good words, one starts really mixing them. So I would say at this level, spelling mistake in the introduction will damage your essay. So be careful. And number two, equip yourself with fancy words and phrases. Now, of course, we talked about this one, getting caught by your own language, this is what I said, don't overdo it. Now, when it comes to information, when we talk about information, your introduction needs to touch all important aspects of the questions. Do not leave something for later. Remember, your mark is decided here. This is one thing I have learned that it's usually at the level of an introduction, your mark is decided, so really be careful. And, of course, always use the WH questions to guide, your, to guide yourself. I will try to demonstrate how you can use, the, use this in, in some of the introduction I wrote. Now, for the logic, logic is where see, most students suffer, really. See, simply, logic is like a scaffold. It's an, itself an outline. For instance, once you decide to order your ideas into a certain cr criteria, if the letter are grounded on logic or a certain theory, you will not have a problem because the examiner will understand you. Okay, I will try to explain this later in my video so I can be more practical here. Now, let's look at one of the questions I think of last year in a PhD. How can active and interactive learning be fostered and tested? So what I want to do here is I want to ask questions you know, for me, so I can understand how can I tackle it. So, for example, this question is how, so it's directly asking for this, so you, you there is no way of escaping this. Number two, what do you mean by interactive and active learning? Since someone is asking you about something, you need to define it. And number three, why should it be fostered? I mean, if you say that active and interactive should be fostered, it's just meaning it should be encouraged, then why is that? Number four, who should foster it? When you say it should be fostered, then there is is it either something or someone. Next, why should be, for example, we go to the test, why should be tested? And even what do you mean by the word tested here? Because the question is kind of really vague, it doesn't mean anything. Do we have tested? Do you mean assessed, tested? So the question is really weird. So we need to ask a lot of questions concerning this. Moving next. I try to write introductions concerning this. So let's start with my first introduction. We said, it is rather truism that interactive learning is one of the important tenets in communicative approaches. So here I'm trying to say, what is it? So, and why should be fostered? So it is one, it's an important tenet in communicative approach. We always encourage communicative approach. 
and and so this is y and in the same time what is it so next in the letter uh, okay so this is the what is it in the letter learners are required to be actively engaged in authentic classroom activity in which they learn by doing so i defined in this case what do you mean by active and interactive at the level you see i did not use that what we call some style like you directly define it no it's the definition is there implicitly now however that cannot be achieved without learners devoting considerable attention having curiosity participating and working in cooperation with both their teacher and peer groups you see here i said how should we foster so this cannot we cannot have uh, active and interactive learning without these moreover learners constitute only one aspect in the learning process so this is also not enough so we have other aspects that need to be minded when it comes to fostering active and interactive so like what contemplating on the approach adapted the material used and the role of the teacher you remember when i talked about the logic in this case for example in all the topics related to didactics we always have this kind of order like for example we start with an approach and we start with the syllabus then we go to the to to materials teacher role learners role there is kind of a coherent order there for you so use this this uh, like a skeleton so you can have a better communication with the examiner so i can understand you directly now equally important it is imperative for practitioners to test and assess interactive learning you see one of the problem in this question i me myself i could not understand what what does the the one ask the question what does he mean really or she means right uh, to what do you mean by test so what i did i insert the word assess so i can use it later for my favor this is always tricky but remember this is a phd exam the question is so open and sometimes you have to really to use these kind of tricks so you kind of buy really kind of um, you help yourself you help the question to be in, uh, in your favor i'm going to uh, tackle the next introduction which is another example maybe with a different with the same idea with different words the adaptation of communicative approaches in efl classes has resulted in a marked shift and marked shift in the role of both teachers and learners so in this i am really focusing on these two regarding the latter the image of a passive learner is no longer conceivable rather learners are asked to be responsible for learning by devoting considerable attention have curiosity interest participating participation and working collaboration with their teachers and peer groups see i did the same thing different words however such a change in the role of learners requires an alignment of several aspects the learning process starting from the approaches adapted type of materials utilized and the role of teachers and how assessment is carried out this introduction is really not that good but still what i did it's like i shifted the talk uh, that active and interactive learner is a change in the role of the learners and this really should be the the main point in this essay number three another introduction so the same thing we have communicative approaches and the notion of learning by doing learners active engagement in interactive learning has become a necessity in the efl classroom learners more than ever are asked to be responsible of their own learning you see I also this is devoting considerable attention have curiosity interest participation and working collaboration it's the same thing just added responsibility means that i'm going maybe to talk about learner autonomy as one of the concepts key concept in this the point however fostering this role entails the alignment of several aspects in the learning process from the approaches um, approaches adapted methods implemented types of materials teachers role and how assessment is carried out so what i did here i just i tried again that same skeleton i used to back my logic number four I said there is no question that today's language classroom are often seen as a dynamic learning context where learners are engaged in authentic interactive activities so this is the definition from which they learn by doing however assuming such role by learners requires a letter to devote considerable attention participation curiosity collaboration the same thing nevertheless learners are only one aspect in the learning process and any endeavor to devote and encourage active and interactive learning has to count count for the research adapted the material used and the role of the teacher 
it's usual what i did it's the same thing just different word different ids sometimes they focus on specific points now number five it's i took like a difference approach language classroom have long departed from passive learning styles where a teacher stands in front of the classroom why learners listening with the focus on authentic communication teachers are asked to encourage active and interactive learning so i took it back to the teacher which has uh, learning which has proved to be effective by keeping learner motivated and engaged in keeping learning flexible so this is communicative approach now however arriving at such kind of classroom teachers need to be careful in designing lesson plans you see in this introduction what i did is i removed the the the, uh, the theory part so i am focusing on the practical part so it's only the classroom the teacher so i'm not going to devote much talk about theories etc although they will always be there implicitly so furthermore so we said aspects from materials types of learners you see i changed the uh, uh, if i'm going to write an essay about this i'm going to talk more about what kind of learners maybe we have some types of learn types of learners though they can't really participate maybe some they interact well with audio visuals so some they per they may engage well with games so here it's like a different uh, different point of view so furthermore a teacher also should should seek to develop the quality of activities and performance of learners so here are test tested what do you mean by tested thus constantly monitoring these activities by testing and assessing is required so you see what i did here it's like i have five different introductions of the same question and someone and there is there is no way someone can tell me this is the good answer this is the best answer because simply each one is going to choose one particular point of view and work and uh, of course works from that from that view i hope you have enjoyed this video and what i would like you to do i would like you to put in a comment which introduction is good if you have found the well, spelling mistakes and problems in my introduction please also comment on that and uh, always a subscribe and like a video if you like it and uh, stay tuned for my next video goodbye